Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a black and white butterfly on a orange flower. It should be, uh, hopefully, I'll try to keep it pretty easy project for you. And uh, I've got my husband, Mark, with me today. He's going to be man and chat for our live show. Hey there, everybody. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so this is my reference image. Uh, it kind of came out a little bit uh, more kind of gray blue in my printer, um, but we're gonna use like a more vibrant green in the background here. Uh, because the undertones of a lot of the uh, butterfly here has got some yellow in it and the uh, flowers got the, all the orange in it, I went ahead and coated my uh, nine by 12 inch uh, canvas uh, board with a coat of yellow oxide. Um, so any kind of uh, deep yellow would probably work. Um, you can skip this step if you don't want to do it. Um, it won't make that much difference, but I really like to use a lot of layers. I think it uh, adds a lot to the painting. So I'm using a Frederick's canvas, uh, Belgian linen canvas board today. They provided our canvases uh, for our videos and we really appreciate it. The canvas uh, linen boards are really nice because they're smooth. They've got a little bit of texture, but they're pretty smooth and easy to work with, especially for some lining like we're going to be doing today with the butterfly. Let me go over our brushes really quick. I've got a large flat. This is a number 10 bright, the 6100 series in the Princeton. Um, there's a couple more of the Princeton 6100 series here. This one's the number four filbert and the number two round. And then we're going to need a couple of smaller angle brushes. So we're going to use a three eighths inch and a quarter inch angle shader with the velvet touch line from also from Princeton. And then a Princeton select number one round and a possibly a fan brush may do some splattering. We'll see. I'm a fan of the fan brush. <laughs> All right, let's go over about it really quick. <laughs> Carbon black. Unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta. I've got several reds here. Probably not going to need all of them. So if you've just got one of these, they'll, they'll probably do. Uh, I've got uh, cadmium red, medium cadmium red light, cadmium orange, yellow oxide, uh, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium. This is thalo green. Usually I use yellow shade. Today I use, I'm going to use the blue shade of the cadmium um, or the thalo green, but if you have the yellow shade, just add a little bit of thalo blue to it. It'll get something similar to this. Thalo blue green shade, uh, burnt sienna and burnt umber. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is show you the drawing and then we're going to paint in our background kind of around our butterfly and, uh, start on some of the details. So I wanted my butterfly to take up this whole kind of third of the canvas. If you did a diagonal from this side to this side, your butterfly would be almost fully uh, in here and a little bit overlapping. So really, if you kind of find the dead center of your canvas, which is right about here, and kind of come drop down into the side a little bit, that's where I started and just did an oval for the body kind of like this. It's sort of tilted up this way, like an egg shape, tilted up this way. And then the head uh, is another oval that kind of sits down below just a little bit. And that's where all the wings are going to come out from. So the front wing here, the one that's kind of tucked in behind, comes in just a little bit behind the shoulder here. So there's the neck and here's the back. You're gonna come up, almost straight up, a little bit at an angle this way and curve it straight up like that and end it uh, a couple fingers width before the edge of your canvas and curve it back around like this. Then this one is going to be a little bit farther back from the other one. So really if you split this in half, like right down the middle, that's about where this one uh, is going to start, this part of the wing. And you're gonna curve it up and go all the way to that corner all the way up to the upper edge. The tip of it is going to kind of be pointing out this way. So you're going to curve it back around and that'll be sort of the end. And then it sort of flattens out as it angles back down a little bit. Oh, it curves around, but it sort of goes, does almost a straight line here. And then if you split this in half, so here's the, I guess if you did a straight line through the middle here, 
Uh, this one is going to start right about where that top part is, and then this bottom wing is going to start where that cross piece is right here. And then about halfway between this mark and this mark is where this wing splits. Yes. What? Oh, you said mark. Sorry. Oh. And then up and around. And then back down. And then it curves into this. So this kind of comes out this way, curves around. This one is a little bit more angular and curves in and meets that one like that. So this one is kind of a teardrop shape, really, if you look at that shape. It points straight into here. This one is uh, sort of a pointed teardrop shape. And then this one is a lot smaller. It's not going to go as close to the edge as this one is. These two are going to be almost straight down from one another, just slightly angled in. So that's why you know you've gotten this one big enough. And then there's going to be a few a little bit of space at the bottom of our canvas as well. So there's our butterfly. And then the center of our flower is right in here. It's kind of a little bit off from the head. Most of it is going to be tucked in behind the body or underneath the main portion of the body here. So just kind of do a semicircle and then really that's kind of our center of our flower right here. Then we've got a petal coming up out and curving down off the canvas here and tucked back here. Then there's one sort of right in here. You can see the center of the flower, kind of the stem right here coming out. There's another big petal right here curving in. Another one back in here. And then the smaller one right in here. And then this one is folded, so we're going to curve it up and go out. Circle it back around and then stop it like that. And then uh, you're going to do the inside of it is going to kind of meet up where that one is. All right, and then we'll do the legs later, but that's kind of our basic butterfly to start with. And let's go ahead and put in our green around him for our background. So I'm going to grab the yellow green blue shade and some white. With which brush? With the large number 10 bright. And I'm just going to see how close that is to our color there. It's really close. That's why I chose it instead of the phthalo green yellow shade that I usually use. This one was just almost a perfect match for the background color of our reference image. So I just thought it'd be a shortcut. But like I said, if you have the yellow shade, just add a little bit of phthalo blue to it and you should be fine. So I'm going to just dab it on here with... a series of crisscrossing brush strokes. I want some of these brush strokes to show though, so I'm not over blending it really. And a little bit of that background color might peek through and that's okay too. So I'm going to get close to my flower here. I'm just going to kind of go around it. I will clean up these edges when I do my flower so they don't have to be perfectly clean right now. Hey, you got a question for you. Yes. Valerie wants to know uh, how how do you like the linen canvases versus plain canvases? I like them because they're um, a little smoother. Um, I do, you know, some some canvases, sometimes you want a lot of texture on your canvas, you know, uh, when, especially like when you're doing techniques like dry brushing and things. Um, it can be helpful to have a really textured, highly textured canvas. But these really lay down the paint fairly smoothly. It's a little bit easier to get a... Uh, even coat of paint on. Um, so if that's something you struggle with, you might want to try the linen boards. But yeah, I, I, I like them a lot. This has turned out to be one of my favorite canvases of all the ones that they've sent me. Um, I've got some new ones in last week that I'm going to try, start trying out in a few of the different textures. I've got a Dixie uh, cotton canvas that I got a few different sizes with so I'll be doing some paintings with that as well just to kind of test them out and see how I like it but 
So far, this has been my favorite out of their ones that they've sent me. And then another question. Okay. What level of difficulty are we with this painting today? Um, I think, I think I'm going to kind of keep it a mid-level beginner project. You know, it won't be super difficult. It'll be a good project for learning, um, learning lining. So if lining is something that you struggle with, you know, and when I say lining, I just mean, you know, creating straight lines, um, with your paint. Hopefully I'll show you some tips on that. It'd be a good project to, you know, work with, um, uh, for that reason. But you could do this fairly, um, you know, pretty, Oh, what I want to say, impressionist style, you know, a little bit looser brush strokes, not super clean lines, and I think it would look really good. So you could, you know, you could kind of allow yourself to have a little bit of, of uh, freedom when you put your brush strokes in. They don't have to be perfect straight lines. Yeah, so I don't know. It didn't, I didn't really answer the question very much. It's it's really hard for me to tell when I'm because I haven't painted it yet. So usually when I get about halfway through a painting, I can tell a little bit more how difficult it's been. Um, you know, just say yeah, this is not a good beginner project, or yes, it is, or whatever. Since I haven't painted this one, I really can't tell you yet. So I'm gonna go on a, out on a limb and say maybe like a sixth. Six, six and a half. Really? Okay. That's what I'm going to say. Well, yeah, if you've never picked up a brush before, this would not be one that I would suggest to, to do. Probably not for your first time painting, for sure. But if you've been painting a little bit while and you want a little challenge and you've done some of my other ones, like some of my flower series and things, some of the large flowers, um, this isn't one that I'll be teaching a lot of blending with. This is not really a blending project this is going to be more of a layering project so um you know it just I kind of do different things with diff different projects this one's a little bit less about blending and more about kind of line work and layering and that kind of thing okay then why did you choose to trace out the flower and the butterfly first then paint around it uh, because I wanted this yellow glow to be underneath the butterfly, I thought about painting the whole thing green, but then I thought I'd really be fighting that color in the background of the of the butterfly. So I just thought that this would be a better um, use of the my color palette. You know, just to go ahead and do the do the I you know I do it differently every time, but this time I really felt like that yellow would look really pretty under it the flower and the butterfly so there's really no other way to get this green on unless I was to paint the green first and then paint the whole butterfly and the flower with the yellow and then paint everything over the top but this is really kind of um doesn't really matter at this you know either way you're gonna have to paint around it something so This is the lesser of two evils really here and you can see I'm not being super careful with this I will I will kind of clean up my edges I want to put in my my petals but uh, you can kind of also see some of the dark areas I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of the thalo blue a little bit of burnt sienna and some more of that green and just in this bottom corner put some of that color in there really dark background color in a couple spots back here just be careful when your paint is drying not to well, put your finger in it like I just did there or, <laughs> or touch it too much <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that all right got another question yeah the difference between heavy body acrylics and just plain acrylics um the acrylics that you get in the tubes like the little bottles of acrylics those are craft acrylics they are very thin they don't have a lot of pigment in them so they won't 
uh, cover as well. You'd have to have, you know, two or three coats of this green on here to cover, uh, whereas you can see it covered really well with one coat um, over the top of this yellow. So that's one main uh, difference between the heavy body acrylics and craft acrylics with the student quality acrylics. They're a little bit more medium, uh, medium thickness, medium viscosity, big word. And um, they have a little bit less pigment. So they don't uh, mix quite as, quite the same, but they still have pretty good similarities to the heavy body acrylics. So that's what I suggest for my beginners, you know, uh, students when they first start out is to grab the like Liquitex Basics or uh, Amsterdam has good student line of acrylics and um, Rumbacher has the, I'm trying to think of their student acrylic brand, but anyhow, uh, Gallery, I think is the Grumbacher line. Um, those will be less uh, less pigmented. So basically with the heavy body acrylics, you're going to have a professional quality paint. Um, the binder is, is what uh, is thicker. And um, so I'm trying to think of what I want to do in here next while I'm trying to answer this question at the same time. Let's work on the flower first. So, yeah, I don't know if I answered that very well, but... I think you did. Okay, thanks. It's just some more awesomer paint. Uh, yeah, it's just got... It's just got... It's, you know, just like anything else. It's you know, thicker. The, it's... Yeah, right. you get what you pay for. Right. And it, it goes a lot farther than your uh, other paints, so... All right, so I've mixed up some of the yellow uh, cadmium yellow medium with some white here. And I'm going to go ahead. I've got my filbert brush here, and I'm going to go ahead and start on the wings of the butterfly here. Just put some of that on. And if you notice with this butterfly, what I'm going to do is put on my brush strokes in the direction that the feather veins go. So... If the veins are kind of going in this direction, I'm going to do my brush strokes this way. When I'm doing the middle part, I'm going to be going up this way and curving it around like this around the outside. That will just give me a head start so that if any of this, you know, streaking shows, it will be intentional, more intentional looking and Just, I'm not trying to really cover it completely. I'm leaving a little bit of that yellow oxide showing through, but I do want to kind of get a head start on that because it's going to take several coats to cover even that yellow oxide with our paint. And I'm going to leave a little bit of that yellow border between the petals and the outside edge of my butterfly wings. Most of that will be filled in with black, but okay. I do have, um, going back to that question about acrylics, I do have a, a video that's called blending with different types of acrylics. Um, that um, goes over the differences between acrylics and things. And it's probably one of the best videos to explain that because I go into depth about different kinds and their benefits. And I also show the differences when you're blending with them, kind of how to, how to use them things. Um, so that, I did that last year sometime. So it's, it's got like blue and black and white, um, little mini canvases I think on the thumbnail I think it just says blending with different kind of types of acrylics or something like to that effect but I have a I have a playlist 
in my, if you go after the video, after this video, if you want to go and check out some of my other videos like that one, I've got a, um, you just click on my name or my photograph and it'll take you straight to my homepage of my, um, YouTube page. And then from there you can click on my playlist tab and it will bring up all my different playlists and that I've got one that's like basic acrylic painting techniques I think it's called and that's in there so along with brush strokes and some other ones that I've done all right so I'm going to grab some of this yellow oxide and I'm going to go ahead and grab some unbleached titanium too I'm going to start putting in my flower petals this is where I'll clean up any kind of rough edges that I've created when I did my green. A little bit darker on the underside of the flower. And I'm going to grab some of the cadmium red light and a little bit of burnt sienna and come up from the center and drag just a little bit of paint into that wet paint that I just laid down. So I just put down the yellow and now I'm dragging back up through it, the wet paint with this color to blend it. So there is a little bit of blending here, I guess. Okay, we were requested to have some butterfly facts. All right. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Despite the name, they are not made out of butter. <laughs> I didn't think so. Yeah, they didn't taste too good. <laughs> just just Gross. saying so. Have you tasted one? <laughs> <laughs> not that I remember. Okay, at well, least at least not, not as an adult. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember a lot of my childhood, so... Okay. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> but, speaking of tasting, they do taste with their feet. Ooh, that's why he's got his feet all up in the flower. That's yeah. right. So, he probably paints with his feet, too. <laughs> I like butterflies already. If you're new to my channel, Mark and I have a long going feud about painting with feet. So that's way have, back to uh, when did that start? I can't remember. I have a remember. special tutorial on Patreon for doing foot painting. Yeah, but it was something else. Like, I was, it was, I think it was when I was finger painting. I think it was when oh, I was yeah, finger probably. painting the nest painting, and you said, I said, do you want to try it? And you said, no, I want to yeah. use my foot. And yeah. I said, no. I even put the glove on. Yeah. And you still wouldn't yeah, let me. Yeah, still. Oh, God. And no, I can't taste with my feet. <laughs> to the people in chat. <laughs> Asking you if you can taste with me. Oh, gosh. See what you've started? <laughs> this is weird. What? Well, not weird, but okay. A group of this butterflies. This is a here. Okay. group of butterflies is sometimes called a flutter. A flutter. Oh, that's cool. This is according, Maybe that's where it comes from. And this is according to the San Diego Zoo. Well, so I believe them. Their eyes are made of 6,000 lenses and can see yeah. ultraviolet light. Wow. That's impressive. Despite popular belief, butterfly wings are clear. The colors and patterns we see are made by reflections of the tiny scales covering them. Cool. 
settle down over there. Don't, don't well, get too Well, I think I saw, I'm thinking, because I think I saw something about that on a show one time where they were showing microscopic. I still don't understand it, though. I don't really understand. I mean, I guess I get the, the, the reflective, so... All right, I'm grabbing more of the yellow, cadmium yellow medium here. I'm gonna continue to fill in here. So I've kind of added some of our darker areas in our flower, which were up and around the center. We're gonna go even darker right in here. That'll give our flower some depth. But I want to Okay, so when you're painting, you're just adding burnt umber into the flower there? No, I was using burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. I know if some, somebody burned something somewhere. Burnt sienna. Yeah, see, you're talking. I'm going to get the one that's going to get mean comments about Well, okay, let's so, not explaining right. my colors. So the person who asked for butterfly facts then asked to explain the flower <laughs> while I was giving butterfly facts. So it's like, okay, come on. <laughs> which do you want? <laughs> she reneged. I'm gonna cut her some slack. <laughs> she didn't realize you were gonna be so thorough. <laughs> I just keep talking and talking. So, yeah. All right, shut up. <laughs> They're not that interesting. <laughs> wait, wait till I'm not doing anything. And wait, wait till I'm doing something repetitive, not doing something where I'm having to change colors very often. Okay, so brushing back over. Also, streaking towards the center with these petals just like I did with the butterfly wings I'm going to be always kind of figuring out where the center of my flower is and that's where I'm going to be pulling these brush strokes towards so that I get these streaks happening in the right direction because if I was filling, filling them in this direction you know if I started out this way and just kind of kept doing this then these ones down here wouldn't look correct because their veins and their striations and their petals are always going to be pointing towards the center of your flower so it's a good rule of thumb I'm just putting a little bit of paint on my brush on the tip of my brush to get these kind of bright areas and I've set it down and then I'll just kind of lift it as I flick it towards the center. So I kind of did a bright edge right along the edge of that flower there. Then when I get up in here I want to pull a little bit towards the center. So I set it down and just pull and lift. Set it down, pull and lift. That's what gives you that kind of broken faded look. Is there a way to mix a burnt sienna? Mm, not really. It's it's kind of a brownish. Uh, it, if you have like red oxide, it's very similar to red oxide. Um, going to grab some yellow or cadmium orange and some cadmium red light here and just do it towards the center of my flower. I'm going to, I put in some of that burnt sienna here and so now I'm going to dab in some of the orangish colors right there. Um, yeah, it's not really, it's a pretty, if you've got red iron oxide, it's similar to that. If you've got um, trying to think of what you might be able to use. I'm maybe burnt umber plus some, we can use burnt umber here speaking of, to darken up this part of the flower here. 
tapping to just blend it into the center part right there. And kind of use it to outline my petals a little bit. And then I'll clean that up later. Let's grab some more of that orange red. Pull it out from the center. The key with this kind of flower here to get the right sort of depth is to have it really dark down in here. And that's what will really um, create that look of depth that we're going for with our flower. <clears throat> All right, going to grab some cadmium yellow light and some white. go ahead and let that dry some. So I'm going to go ahead and use it up here. Right in our center of our butterfly. Pull it out. Wipe that off. I've got a little area right here that's a little bit too thick, so I'm just going to grab some white. I'm going to pull back down the opposite direction. I'll just blend it out. That's magic. <laughs> Let's do it with some white up here. And then I'm going to grab some burnt sienna. I'm going to use it in between these two. wings and use it under here and I put the dark part where I want it to be most noticeable and then I'm just blending out from there while the paint's wet make sure I have a little bit of water in my brush if it doesn't blend you can add a little bit of water and then Keep blending and then it'll just kind of fade it out into the center of the butterfly a little bit. I'm going to use it on the body here, on the underside. I'm going to say hello to everybody. Yeah, we didn't say hello Yeah, yet. we're well into the show, but say hi. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Angela's channel. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday or Sunday, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, we're having a good time. If you haven't already subscribed to her channel, you can check out. You're getting close to 300 videos, aren't you? I think we've got over 300. Really? Mm -hmm. so, I think so. A few hundred videos, all different types and expertise levels, beginners, kids, advanced. Yeah. One or two flower paintings, I think. <laughs> you might have to really dig in and try to find those, but they're in there somewhere. <laughs> but also you can also hit the bell to get reminders of the shows on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Yes. And then down below the description also there's links to materials that she's using, Amazon store, the brush guys for the brushes she's using, social media. Patreon. Yep. Patreon's important because it can get traceable. Traceables, yep. So check it out. Go on down. Do some shopping. <laughs> you can get a Stickman shirt in the Teespring store. That's true. That's true. That's the most important thing. <laughs> All right. Just put in. Added a little bit of yellow to my green and added a little bit of burnt umber to darken it up and just put in my green stem 
for my flower there. It's not looking like much. When you get to this point, you're going to start to panic. That's pretty much normal. I'm pretty much trying not to panic myself right now. So that's just kind of part of the process when you're doing this kind of layering on the, especially on the flower like this. It's just looking really bad right now. And that's perfectly 100% normal. I have to remind myself that too. So just realize we'll get, we'll work through. We're going to just keep working on it until it looks right. So just, just breathe. <laughs> it's not there yet. It, you know, it'll take it a little bit. We'll get it there. Just breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I went to those breathing classes with you. <laughs> It'll be okay. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get through it. All right. Then most of this is somewhat dry. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of burnt umber and a little tiny bit of black just to darken it up a little bit more to start my black part of my wings. And I'm using my 3 8 inch angle brush. And this is where I use the angle brush because I can create these long lines without having to reload. If you have trouble controlling the angle brush, you can always use a liner or a small flat. I'm going to pull in from the outside to create the border. Our butterfly in our picture has got some, his wings are kind of beat up, but so I'm kind of, kind of going to kind of clean them up a little bit. Make them a little bit less broken. I'm going to do the outlines first because those are going to be our main lines. Just a little bit there. This area is going to be pretty dark on this back side, so there's going to be some more details, so don't going too far with it. We'll have some white spots that go over the top of this and we'll also kind of blend it into the rest of the wing so you don't want to like a hard line right here. So I'm just kind of pulling from the outside in and allowing this line to be kind of feathery right here for now. Let's do this line a little bit thinner so I'm not going to press down quite as hard. And there's some stripes on the body that kind of come down using the very tip of my brush. I'm just going to use it to sort of draw these lines in on the body. Yeah, this is kind of turning out to be a kind of a trickier one. So I, I think you're probably about right. A six is probably a good... Six and a half. Yeah, probably. I know. For you world famous artists over there, it's like, eh, it's about a two. <laughs> and people are complaining that your hot mess stage is like their awesome stage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it real for keep it for real. People. <laughs> okay. All right, well. It's hard to tell sometimes for me.
Or I got a I'm question. Just turning my brush so that I keep it, keep that straight, flat edge towards the center, or towards where I'm going. Yep, that's a question. So when you paint larger paintings, mm -hmm. what do you like to paint? Um. One of my favorite paintings that I've done large was a horse statue that we took photographs of when we were in Bordeaux. It was this big kind of bluish horse. Really like that. I painted a lot of really big nest paintings, like a lot of them. I have several large butterfly paintings. I did one butterfly that was 36 by 36, just a single so the three foot by three foot butterfly. Um, what else do I have I done large? Uh, just a big, big tree. When my grandmother died, I took a photograph of a redwood tree looking up. So I did one on a long canvas of like that perspective of the tree narrowing at the top. And I really, really like that one. I didn't sell that one. That one's staying in my permanent collection. Mm -hmm. What else? I don't yeah. know. You like flowers and stuff. Yeah, so. but I haven't done a lot of large flowers on a huge canvas, though, now that I think about it. I can't think of any. I haven't done that many big canvases in a while. Once I started doing YouTube, I kind of didn't have time for anything else, so I haven't done <laughs> anything on yeah, a big you, scale in a long time. They just churn them out 9 by 12s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like nobody's business. By the dozens. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I probably have 200 paintings in my studio sitting here in storage easily, maybe more. Who knows? I just haven't taken the time to sell them. But we're going to show them next summer. So next June, I'm going to have a show here in town in Russellville, Arkansas. We're going to put them all up. So that'll be fun to get to see them all displayed at once. It'll be all of them? Yeah, all the ones that we've got. Yeah, they're probably going to cover a whole wall of... They're not going to be framed. I mean, they're just going to be the panels, you know. I already asked her about that. I was like, you know, I'm fear, not going to frame all these. Fear has just settled over me. <laughs> Why? I mean, that's going to be like three, 400 paintings. Probably, by yeah. By that time. By then, yeah, mm -hmm. probably. Probably. Okay, so I'm going to do a line... Mimicking this line from here all the way down. I'm going to try to keep it straight like that. Now, really, it's going to be easier if you turn your canvas so you're pulling from the left to right. That's just, I find it's easier, like a left handed, right hand person, you know, just using it like you would a uh, if you were drawing with the pencil or pen. So I'm going to do a line here. About halfway up, I'm going to split it right there. This line is going to come this way. And you notice I'm not being super clean about this line because if you look at the butterfly wing real close, there's a lot of these kind of broken edges that are happening. Um, I don't know if you can see that. So very few of them are really perfectly clean. There's a lot of kind of fuzzy lines. So that's what I'm kind of trying to get. We're going to go back over this with some white, some more white, and... So now I've switched to my number two round. Probably could have gone even smaller. And let's see, about halfway up this wing, maybe a little bit less than halfway, we're going to have this big spot right here. And then right above it, it's going to split. You'll find that if you add a little bit of water to your brush or to your paint on your palette when you're doing line work with a brush, 
it'll be that much easier. And then this one is going to round off like this, and you're going to have this little V shape right there. And right here. I will have a traceable for this, so if you don't want to have to draw this in, what I would do at this point is, once you get it to this point and you're ready to do your line work on your butterfly, is to lay down your traceable pattern, um, you know, print it out, print it out, trace it on tracing paper, lay it over the top of your butterfly here, slide your tracing um, or uh, transfer paper underneath, and carefully trace out your lines. Um, if any of the tracing paper makes marks on your painting, that's okay. You can get those off by um, using a little bit of uh, bleach wipes. Sometimes an eraser will work. Just try not to smudge too much when you're doing it. You can always paint over it as well if you make any kind of mistakes or get smudges. All right, so so we've got these two little cells here. This one's going to continue this way here. And this whole area is going to be filled in with black. And there's a little bit of white. In fact, I'm not going to worry about the white. I'm going to put that back in later. So I'm going to just go ahead and fill in this whole thing with black up here. And then it's going to angle down here. And then connect up with this line here. There's a little bit there. And then this is all going to be dark right here as well. You think of these little, um, you know, really the butterfly's got these main long lines that go this way, and then it's got these little, um, once it gets to this area here where it kind of cuts off these lines, then they start angling out this way. So this one kind of angles out first, and then this next one does like that. And then this one comes off from here. And then one bisects this in half right here. And then everything else is little pockets off of that. So your, your little de decorative uh, spots and things all kind of touch on those lines. I'm going to do, let's see, up here. These are kind of rounded here and here. And then, like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in with dark and I'm going to put the white spots back in later. There. So, does it matter if you do the black first and the white, or the white then the black, or is it just a preference? I've done both ways. So. You just find it easier to do it this way? Um, because it was black and white, <laughs> and I had the yellow underneath, just, you know, it was a good way of doing it, but. Sometimes I outline it first and then put the white in, but there was so much white back here. I just thought that that would be a head start and that way you don't have to fill in each cell with the white paint. You know, you'd have to already have a kind of a head start on it. 
so that's why I did it this way. Now I'm going to, while I have my unbleached titanium here, a little bit of white, maybe a little tiny bit of yellow, mostly white, I'm going to go ahead and put back in. So right about where this one comes down right here, there's a curve right here and another one right here and a dot right there and right here. I'll fill those back in with better. More white later. Well, let me see if I can get it more white right now. No, it's that black's too wet, so it's just mixing with the paint. body there and there then I can kind of lightly start cleaning up some of those cell edges and the black lines I don't want to cover it completely But I do want to fade out a little bit of those edges just with a little slight dusting of color over the top of some of my spots and lines. And see how it just kind of softens up the whole look of it. It can be hard. It, butterflies can kind of come off as sort of harsh if you don't do this step. If you just put the lines in, they can look kind of flat. But doing this kind of softening around the um, lines and the edges, I think I find really helps. I like it better. So that's one of the things I like to do. Okay, I'm going to use some of the yellow, cadmium yellow light. Do the same thing with it. I'm going to go back over with black again. So again, this is like multiple layers here. Um, we're already an hour in. I'll try to go faster. Why? Well, I don't know. I'm just... Do you have somewhere to be? No. Okay. All right, so about halfway up is where this is going to cut off. So I've got this line that kind of came up this direction, and then it comes in towards the center a little bit, or some, towards this outside wing. So it sort of splits right down the middle, and then starts to kind of curve in a little bit. There is, let's just go ahead and start from the outside here. So there's another very thin line that curves from here out to about right there. And then another one right here that 
disappears behind that wing. And then another one. These are all three kind of almost the same width. Comes up like that and meets with that line. So this one splits the middle, this one and this one are on either side of it, and this one touches this line right there. Okay. Then it's going to have another one that comes out, and it's going to be as wide as these two put together. So about the same width as these two. You're going to come out and curve out and like that. And then another one right here, right about where that one ended. And that's where this one is going to split. You're going to have as if this line kind of continues, it's going to come down like this a little bit. And then it's going to, this one is going to skirt this line, kind of like we did right here, this line. So it's going to mimic this line all the way up to here. So we're just going to do a line pretty close to the edge all the way down. split off here and here and then this line is going to split this almost in half so this is going to come in and it's going to curve right down the middle like that it's going to have two more pieces that do like this And then this spot is going to go from right here all the way through to in between these two pieces right here. So right here, it's going to angle down it's going to come up like this. These are a little rounded right here. Everywhere it hits a line, it's kind of rounded a little bit. Just slightly. Going with some darker black here and just gonna fill it in a little bit better. There we go. Alright, so there's spot one on this wing. There's gonna be another spot down here in between this line right here that just sort of goes right in here. These really are thinner than I've put them here, so I'm going to go ahead and clean those up later. But make them thinner. 
Okay, so right here. This zigzag shape right there. This curves this way. Does a V shape right here. Same thing here. This one gets kind of disconnected. So there's kind of a spot that happens up here by itself that just barely touches this. And then another triangle right here. And this is almost a straight line up this way. So these are all kind of angled slightly. <clears throat> you can go a little bit outside the lines. And this is going to mimic this shape here, so this here kind of comes up and down just like that line does. I'm going to go ahead and fill it in dark and we'll put in our white later. in chat <laughs> super chats for margaret no comment i think just making sure i was still alive over here <laughs> they're like are you still alive <laughs> you haven't said anything i know <laughs> that's not that's not really that different than normal guys mark's the introvert of all introverts so <laughs> it doesn't talk much I can go a whole car ride for five hours without him saying a word. <laughs> Seriously, it's not a joke. And what's wrong with that? I'm just saying, I just, you know, it's a good thing he likes. I like to talk <laughs> and he doesn't mind listening because <laughs> otherwise we'd never communicate. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Come on. It's not that bad, is it? <laughs> if I have a book and I'm reading in the car. That's true. You, I, I don't disturb you. No, you don't. I'm, I'm very polite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
it's not that you have a book because I don't talk. Right. So you need something to do. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's birthday was is coming up next month, and <laughs> I started a chat with my sons. <laughs> What should we get, Dad? And we're like, I have no idea. <laughs> he, never, he never says he wants anything. He never really talks about anything. So I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> the mind of Mark. <laughs> it's a mystery. I can identify with Mr. Heck. <laughs> yes, the middle. <laughs> yes, yeah. If you've never seen that show, do yourself a treat. It's almost over, which makes me so sad. That is very much our family. All right, I'm going to put back in this white here now that this is dry. Go back in better. Yeah, Mark's very much Mr. Mike. <laughs> Mr. Mike. Mike Heck. Mike Heck, yep. Just Google Mike Heck the middle. You'll, you'll see. You see of what we speak. <laughs> I think that's why I enjoy doing these shows with you, because you talk to me more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from now on, I'll just sit there and I'll read you questions from okay from Facebook or while we're sitting on the couch or while something. While we're sitting on the couch? No, thank you. Please don't. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read you emails from your work. <laughs> oh, that would be really exciting. Exactly. Oh, okay. I'm almost done with this wing. So you can see where I kind of just reinforced all that white there, but I'm really being deliberately kind of sloppy with it. I'm not being perfectly clean and that really... I think helps with that soft overall softening effect of the butterfly. It makes it look better, in my opinion. Yeah, because when you zoom out like that, it gives it that mm -hmm. that softer feel for sure. Right. All right, we're going back in. Okay. More of the black, a little bit of brown. The brown just kind of softens up that black a little bit. Just makes it not so harsh. There is a lot of brown in the, in the spots in this butterfly. It's not perfectly black and white. Okay, so let's do this part. So this one comes up like that. This one continues up like this. And right about here where this split is, it's going to be kind of across from here. There's going to be, you could even do a line right here. There's going to be a spot that zigzags right like this. And really you could, there is a vein that happens right here. You could probably put that in the splits right here. I think it's this one. So this kind of dips down to meet that and goes back up to this little spot there. And then there is a okay, so that goes off that direction. This one actually kind of comes up a little bit higher, it goes more like this. And then you have this rounded out right there. And then <coughs> excuse me, goodness. So that there, and then okay, so I see this comes up like that. And there 
there's another piece that goes like this. Up this direction. Continue it out like that. This, but oh, what did I just do? I was looking at my reference. <clears throat> Losing my voice. <clears throat> okay, so this line here is going to. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll take something to drink for you. I like that. Thank you. I probably need to drink. Ah, oh, that was good. <laughs> okay, all better. <laughs> like this. Round it out. So this is kind of a heart shape. These two kind of come together and then right here. Both of these two lines. <laughs> and then this curves up here and this splits. here like that out that way one two you know what this one is a little higher I'm gonna go and make that a little bit higher <clears throat> so I could do two of th two things here. I could either cl clean this up and just cover this line, which is I think what I'm going to do. Cuz I decided to move it over a little bit, or you could just leave it in. I mean, it was nobody would have ever known probably except for me. It would have bugged me, so I'm going to move this whole piece over just a little bit. That is so normal for me. This is my normal. Because I usually sketch with paint. So I don't usually start out with a finished drawing. So I'm sorry if this stresses somebody out. This, this is just normal. This is kind of how I do with my paint. I sort of move things around while I'm painting. And adjust my sketches. Which I probably could have just drawn that in. And saved everybody the uh, heart attack that I just gave them, but I will have, like I said, the finished drawing exactly perfect the way I want it to be. So I usually take the drawing right off of my finished painting. So it's exactly what I painted and it will not have any, won't have to do that part there that I just did. <laughs> so I think this painting is going to be on par with the uh, tractor painting. Really? Is, Why? Uh, what kind of butterfly is this? Oh gosh, I don't know. Yeah, so let the controversy begin. <sighs> paper, uh, I thought it said something said paper something or other uh, in one of the Paper pictures. something or other, okay. Paper. I'm good for that. Um, I'm guessing tree nymph butterfly. Tree nymph, okay. Sounds good to me. This is 
gonna come up this way. This is gonna connect over to this, so I'm just sort of keeping an eye on where that one ends, and I want this to kind of connect up to the to that one somewhat. the tops of this. This just in. Super chat message what? from Margaret. Okay. Says, uh, just wanted to say how much that I love y'all. Oh. And I've learned how to paint by watching Angela and painting along with her. Keep up the good work. That's awesome. Thank you, Margaret. That's exactly what my hope is. Probably made this wing a little bit wider. I could have spread out this part a little bit more so that these were a little closer together, but I think um, it's fine. I'm getting nitpicky here, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then all of this I'm just going to fill in. And we'll put in our white spots later. Grab some white with my unbleached titanium and I'm going to start putting those in. So this is going to be like that. This one's going to be right here. Okay, so there's two spots on either side of these. Spots are going to start right about here, and they're going to be 
see two of them on either side of this. So this black line like goes through the middle. So this black line goes through the middle. There's gonna be a spot here and here. Make sense? <coughs> Make these kind of oval. We'll clean up the edges later. I think we're missing some on this one. I think this wing got tattered right here, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in. <coughs> what are you left? Good out? job. Thanks. Uh, it's a nice soft throat clear. <laughs> I'm trying. Very dainty. <laughs> oh, oh. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, grabbing some of the yellow here. Cadmium yellow light. I'm going to go back over some of these. Now that I've got my lines in. I'm going to definitely soften this area up a lot. So I'm just brushing lightly over so you can kind of see the lines through. It's not kind of covering up completely, but definitely obscuring the obscuring it a little bit. Do it on either side of these lines. If I want to thin it out, I'll just add a little bit more white. Really just blurring that black line a little bit. Use brighter white here. Doing the same on my spots. Kind of just eating away at the edges a little bit. So that's why it wasn't really perfectly careful with my spots because this is where you can kind of clean up your lines make your edges a little bit 
more defined if you want to or blur them more if you want to. It's up to you. It's a rough crowd in chat today. Oh, yeah? Why? Yeah, now I'm being criticized for my throat clear. For your throat clearing? Mm -hmm. Why? But... <laughs> <laughs> they're making fun of you? Yeah, they're saying it was pitiful. Well, yeah. It wasn't a very good attempt, I don't think. <laughs> was it manly enough? Well, you weren't really mimicking me too much. You were oh. just kind of... <laughs> hey, you got paint on your fingers. Do I? On your other hand. Oh, thank you. So I'm touching my shirt. <laughs> Is that why you mentioned it? No. I oh. just I saw it on the on the video. Oh. white now just some of these areas here you can see how that covered up really nicely there you can't even tell that we moved that line anymore so I just want to make sure we're getting out all that gray you know since we did uh, cover it up we don't want the gray color in our wings so I added a little bit of yellow back in and a little bit of the white and it cleans that right up you won't even know it was there I'm gonna grab some of the brighter yellow cadmium yellow medium use it right in here some of that brighter yellow So we're getting there. We're almost there with our butterfly wing here. Getting real close. Let's go ahead and do this bottom one and then we'll probably go back in and kind of edit a little bit more with the black one more time. But feeling good about what we've got going on here. Just don't forget his tasters. Oh yeah, no. Can't forget those. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and while I'm thinking about it, put in some brighter black for the eyes. Some more lines around there. So let's go ahead and ta tap in some of the darker color back in on top of the black there. Clean up around this wing here. And then I can go in with the really dark black now and just anywhere where I want it really dark, like the center of these spots, I'm going to touch in a little bit of this black. on this one too.
don't go right up to the edge, just kind of keep it sort of in the center. Some of the brownish black hair. I'm just going to clean up around this while I'm thinking about it. Alright, there we go. It's got really pretty spots on its wings. Alright, so this bottom one, we're going to see we'll split it right down the middle to about you see you're gonna come in a little bit right about here and then it's gonna come up here and down here. And there's a little bit of the body shown right here. So I'm going to go ahead and split that off. Grab some burnt umber here, or, or burnt sienna. This part is the body. I forgot. It's not a wing. You see a little bit of that body poking through right down there. Connects up right about there. And then there's an a leg that comes down right here and angles back touches that body and then comes down into the flower And there's another leg right here. Grabbing some black hair so that I'm making these legs a little bit darker. I'm going to go in on the back side of that leg with the black. This one is tucked behind. This one comes from right here on the head and down they think this is the front of the face right there So there are two lines. One kind of curves this way. Whoop. This might be the tongue. There's 
another one kind of back here that goes straight. And then two antennae. That curve up and down. There and there. You can switch to a smaller liner brush if you need to for this part. Got this zoomed in. I'm gonna show you what I do right here. I'm gonna darken up that line just a little bit over the top. Just the ones where I want them to be more visible. The rest of them I'm gonna keep faded. Just dry brushing a little bit of color on here. Okay, let's do down here. Now that we know that this is the body, I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow oxide and burnt sienna. And do little segments on the body right here, just a little bit. A little bit of burnt umber. Grabbing some burnt sienna and some cadmium yellow again here. Just add a little highlight on the body right there. Okay, good enough. Let's continue with our lines. So something that happens right there, connects, comes down, and then there's another line. There are three lines, major lines coming from here. So one here, one here, whoop, and one here. All right, so those are our three lines that are going to split our wing. To come out this way and down. Then this line is going to come in like that and end right there. This line is going to go straight. Being kind of messy with this, sorry. line is going to come down like this. Could you see this one? Was I too zoomed in? I might be too zoomed in, huh? Um, I think I missed this whole thing. I didn't realize we were so close. No, we're seeing it. Okay. Well, now we are, but when I did this, I think I was off camera. Oh. Zoom out a little bit. Thank you. Okay, right if there. I get in trouble with people in chat, I'm blaming well, it on I'm you. I'm just saying I can't keep in cotton mm -hmm. keep in so all you people screen. in chat it's not my fault <laughs> just like 
can't keep anybody happy today. <laughs> zoom in, zoom out. Talk more, talk less. <laughs> <laughs> Poor honey. It's like, oh, it's got such a hard job. <laughs> You're so underappreciated. Now, now they want to know how many legs they have. It's like, seriously? I don't know. They Look it up. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I'm not paying attention. I think four, right? No, Are two of them tucked have, back in? They, well, they have six. Okay. Three pairs of legs, and sometimes they do tuck two back. I think they've got two of them tucked back here because I only see four in my picture. They have so two. I see one, two, three, four, and then this is, I think, the tongue, and these are the two antennae. Yep. So they've got two tucked back here somewhere. But if it makes you feel better, go ahead and put them in. So, yeah, they have two antennae and a mouth that is a long tube. And then three pairs of legs. And then some of them only use four legs. They carry two front legs against their bodies. Oh, so they're probably tucked up right here. I can see something right here. Mm -hmm. Kind of tucked right there and there. So, yeah, they're probably tucked right there. Yep, you can see the elbow of it right here. There's little two of them tucked right there. Okay, well, good now. Makes more sense. I feel like I want to put a highlight on the, way, the eyes, but I don't see one, so I'm not going to. But I, I kind of want to try to talk myself out of it because it may make it look weird. Maybe if we do it really light, like with a brown color, let's grab some burnt umber or burnt sienna here and just do a little bit right here. There, okay. I feel better now. Let's go back to our wings. Oh, this is here taking longer than I thought it would, but it always does, doesn't it? So. No, you're you're pretty good about estimating how long videos will go. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you're so mean. Okay. that and then this one is gonna go like this you're gonna continue and touch that oh, I figured this would be a two-hour one but I was hoping for sure I always hope for the best and then it never really happens but you know one of these days, I'm going to surprise myself, and I'll get done with the two-hour video in a in one hour. I'll be shocked myself. Be so proud of myself. <laughs> okay, so this way, and then this is going to continue right here. Kind of does this sort of teardrop shape right here and then this it's going to split off right there and then this has two splits so it's going to break in half right he here trail off towards the center and right in between these two right here And create a little box and continue down this way. And here I'm not really worrying about my lines being perfect because we'll be covering up a lot of this with our white paint later. I'm going to 
thick up, thicken up that line right there. Round this and this off a little bit. Okay, there's a big spot right. Another one right here. Sorry guys, we're not being very entertaining today. I think I'm just being really <laughs> concentrating a lot. A lot of concentration happening. Okay, so down from here, almost directly down, there's gonna be a spots here. Little V-shaped thing happening here. And another angle down here. This one's pretty much just for like, if you're serious about painting this, then you're gonna learn how to paint it. But I guess I'm <laughs> not being all that entertaining for those who just wanted to watch, watch and hear us chatting. It's not happening today, is it? I mean, I guess a good dance. <laughs> they won't get me yeah. to camp see you dance though. So oh, it doesn't really okay. matter. Let me... Maybe I've been dancing the whole time then. <laughs> okay. I think you dance less than you talk, honey, so. <laughs> but that is not likely. Just. You know, I just might dance for like a thousand dollar super chat. <laughs> Challenge has been thrown out there. Okay. <laughs> well, don't do super chat because YouTube's going to take 30% of it. Okay. So. <laughs> don't do super chat. <laughs> so I to say, don't give us money. No. Sign up for Patreon. Get stuff. That's true. Yes, if you do want to donate to the channel, a good way to do that is to do Patreon because then you do get bonus goodies and our percentage is higher. They don't take as much as YouTube does from it. Not to say we don't really appreciate the super chats. We do. Mm -hmm. So do. It's awesome. So, but if you'd like to you know have access to bonus videos and traceables and things like that and you want to donate you can do that at patreon patreon.com slash angel fine art and then you can have access to extras goodies and traceables and all that kind of good stuff too as well as supporting our channel so just a thought it's a good thought really don't know why YouTube takes that much out of, not that I don't appreciate that they allow us to use their free streaming service and storage, uh, store our videos and <laughs> provide them for free. Whoa, llama just took a dive. <laughs> I don't know what. It just fell asleep. It did. It just <laughs> fell asleep right off, right off the thing there. Okay, so let's see. I don't even know what point I was trying to make there. Oh, just the, you know, YouTube provides a platform for oh, us yeah, to they reach do. the world. Yeah, so I don't begrudge 
them getting percentage, but 30% is pretty high. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying, YouTube. Mm -hmm. And they've got a new, a new like sponsor thing too that they've started, but I'm not going to. Uh, somehow I ended up with an extra cell here. Okay, well, I don't know how that happened. I was concentrating so hard, too. No, I wasn't dancing and knocking stuff over everybody. No, I don't know how that happened. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about it. Um... I can't remember what I was saying now. YouTube has activated a new. Oh yeah, service. yeah, they've got a new, like, sponsor, um, like a sponsor button where you can sponsor people's channels. I don't know if it's on every every channel yet, but, um, but there again, they're taking five dollars out of it from the from the creators, so. Or, you know, five, 30% off of it from the craters. So it's kind of... If you're going to do the $5 sponsor, you sh you know, you can do it on Patreon. And then you get access to my bonus video, which I do once a month. We're going to do a... We're going to do another butterfly painting, actually, I think. Um, this one is going to be a peacock butterfly. So... And we're going to have um, purple asters, I believe, with it. So should be good. And you're doing challenges in the uh, in your Patreon. Yeah, the Patreon Facebook, Facebook group. Yep, there we're doing. Um, they get to vote on the on the bonus video. So they're the ones that picked the bonus video uh, image. And then they also get, uh, I do live chats every Monday or most every Monday if I'm around. And um, I do a challenge video, a challenge image every, every week. So we work on a painting um, throughout the whole month. So it, it allows me to do a longer, you know, longer, um, it, more in-depth ones than I would normally do. So the last time, what did we do? Here, I'll pull it. Yeah, I'll pull it. We did, we did this one in the group. So we did the background one week, we did the bench the other week, and then we did the girl it was four weeks. The drawing was the first week. Um, so it was probably a five-hour project. So we, you know, it's it's nice because it allows me to take my time on stuff like that. So. And those videos are up all the time. So you can join that group and then just go find the old, you know, the old chats and they're all saved in there. Same thing with the $5 bonus videos on Patreon. They're all saved, so you can see all the old chat, old bonus videos as well as the new one. And also we do high-res images and reference images. So all of the, when I finish this painting, I will upload the high-res resolution photograph of it in that on Patreon. So if you're doing it, you'll have, you know, mine painting as well as the original reference image to look at. Use it as a screensaver, whatever you want to do with it. Okay, this time I didn't go too far in with that black, so now I don't have to paint those white dots back in there. They are still... So that's good. All I'm having to do is just do these kind of little rounded things around them. Whoops.
It's looking good. Gets to the point you're like, oh yeah, okay, we're getting there, right? Okay, so can I stop panicking? You can stop panicking now. I think we're <sighs> All right. the flower's still not looking that great, but we'll get the flower there. Take another hit of my water on the rocks then. <laughs> It's all good, huh? It's yep. all good. Okay. I think this is pretty much. There we go. So now all we need to do is go back over this with a little bit of the white. Brighten up. Soften the edges of some of our black lines. Just barely touching those edges so that I'm kind of dusting a little color over the top of some of those lines. Grab some of that yellow, add some of it in here. What? I can't type for nothing today. What are you trying to type? Okay, well, just going over lightly with this white here. What? Oh no, that uh you know, with the support from Patreon, you know, the upgrades we did last year with the video and audio and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And, Made a huge difference. And uh, so this year, I'm looking, starting to spec out parts to build a new computer. Yep. Faster computer. We've got, we've mm -hmm. almost filled up all of our storage, so we were able to, we're buying a new storage system, too, so. We have, we bought it. Well, yeah, I know. Yep. That's what I'm saying. And if I can talk the artist into it, get some C stands and some other lights. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm all down for new lights. Okay. I can always use more lights. So 
as long as it's not in my way. That's my that's my only beef with the lights. I don't want them on my table. No, they they won't be on your table. Okay. They'll be suspended above you. There we go. That sounds good. Sounds really good. It's nice to have Mark helping me with this. It was very, very many years of doing this by myself. So it's been nice having a partner. problems with because I have no idea about filming when I first started this as is as perfectly obvious if you watched any of my older videos <laughs> she's it's a wonder we ever ever got this far on our channel <laughs> people I, I really appreciate people like Mona who started out you know when we were <laughs> at 10,000 subscribers or whatever she saw the potential <laughs> He's like bad video, bad audio. Exactly. <laughs> really good painting. Oh, this this is gonna work. <laughs> exactly. Man, they know what they're doing. <laughs> poor so poor stream quality. Okay, got the black here back, and I'm going to darken up the centers a lot of these, and just kind of touch back up some of these lines if I went too far on my white. One of the other things I sometimes do, I don't see it in this butter butterfly, but sometimes the butterfly um, veins will have little highlights in them. So sometimes it's nice to go in with like a little bit of burnt sienna and some light. Um, so let's go ahead and use the liner brush because I want a very thin line for this. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Linda has a good question and I missed it. So I'm going to go back and read it. Okay. So is the yellow in the butterfly reflections from the flower? Uh, no, I think these butterflies do have a little bit of yellow in them. So yeah, that is a good question. But no, I think that they have some yellow in them, I believe. So. We don't know. I'm pretty sure they do because I've seen other pictures where they have yellow in them. So I'm pretty sure they are, it's yellow. Okay, so some of them you can kind of put a highlight down the vein, adds a little bit extra. I can't really see it, but that's fine. All right, so let's finish up our. I think our butterfly is pretty much done there. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and finish up our flower, and we'll be done. So I'm gonna use the. Angle brush, grab my, grab some cadmium red and the, cadmium red light here, pull from the center out and we're going to put some veins in our flower. Grab some of that quinacridone magenta, a little bit of the burnt umber. Might even grab a little bit of that black color. Just do some really dark right there. Use that tip of the brush, just kind of draw in some little really dark sections right there. Clean that out. I'm going to use my green with a little bit of black, tiny bit of yellow. I want to darken up this section here. 
underneath the flower that stem area. Clean that out. I'm gonna pull kind of weird looking because these petals are coming straight at you so if it's bothering you you could probably just make them come all the way out and it might look a little bit less weird but we're just going to do it the way I'm seeing it so grabbing some of the yellow I've got both yellows here straight straight out of the and I'm going to streak in toward the center. using the edge of my brush there to create some highlights. I'm going to use a little bit of white with that yellow. Right in here. Right where it's closest to us, brightest. We'll pull that part out a little bit. Forward. Could somebody use a black pen to do some of the line work? Yeah. Yeah, you could. You totally could. And, and then you could lighten it up with the paint over the top. And what kind of pen would you recommend? Um, I would use a Faber-Castell Pit or uh, their Posca has some good pens. Um, Molotow has good pens that are acrylic markers. Um, probably use acrylic marker if I was going to do it so you wouldn't have to worry about you know alcohol uh, reactiveness so use an acrylic paint pen you don't have to worry about any of that okay using yellow oxide here just kind of brush back over some of these areas that this paint petal here continued out. Okay, there we go. Just need to bring that out a little bit wider right there. 
We want it to be really dark right there. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and put in our little centers of our flower. So I'm going to use a little bit of orange on one side of the brush and some of my yellow on the other side. So I've got both colors there kind of globbed on to my brush. And I'm just going to use it to tap in my fuzzy centers on my flower there. Grab some more of the bright yellow. Do some kind of crisscrossy so that they're not all perfectly straight aligned. Some of them are going to come out like this. And you're going to see just to the end of some of them coming down into your flower. And having these dark colors underneath is the key. So you need those dark colors underneath, otherwise this yellow won't, won't show up against the background. So you may have to do some white in your yellow. If it's not showing up, you can add a little bit of white and then put some white, some yellow uh, over the top again once that white dries. But I think that's pretty good. You know, it's covering up the legs there that we've put in already, so we don't have to do those again. Oops, forgot about that orange. Wipe that off and grab some white. Some yellow. Throw some white there to pull that part of that flower forward a little bit. You could do this technique, these, you know, this butterfly on any of the large flower series. So if you've done one of my large flower paintings, you could add this butterfly to it if you had room, you know, or do it on a really large canvas with the butterfly. I think it'd be really pretty. I'm just adding a little bit of yellow to this petal down here. you could do really interesting composition all right I think I'm done I'll call that good hope you guys have enjoyed it uh, thanks for joining us on this Saturday we will be back uh, next Saturday we're gonna have Tuesday night off because Mark's gonna be out of town um, so I'm not gonna make Spencer be my co-host I was thinking about it but I don't think I'm gonna try and do that to him it's too complicated now it's not as complicated it wasn't as complicated the last time he helped me. So we've got a lot of different cameras and things. So I think we're just going to call it good. And uh, we'll be back next Saturday with another video for you. And um, hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you next time. If you want the traceable for this, uh, all the links for that are down in the description. Patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. All right. See you next time. Bye.